aircraft opener now. you that. 
That is why I exist. So this tape is the last one. Once you are done listening to it, I am one phantom limb that will be gone for good. My flesh, my bones, joining the silt on the ocean floor. But do not forget, as long as you remember me, I will always live within you. Not a phantom limb or a phantom anything, as part of your heart. I will always be your angel of peace. So, I know exactly how to finish. Say peace. <laughs> Happy birthday, Snake. <laughs> Happy birthday. Code Talker, I haven't seen you eat a single thing since you got here. Let me guess. Photosynthesis? Oh? What makes you say that? Well, a long time ago, I knew someone with a similar ability. Well, you are correct. Most of my body is covered with parasites. I supply them with water, and in return, I receive sugars they produce when exposed to light. Mm -hmm. It isn't just my skin either. The parasites also act as my eyes. They have replaced many of my internal organs as well. It is thanks to them that I live on after over a century. How did you obtain them anyway? Through your research? I would like to say as much, but there is more to it than that. Let me take you back 20 years. I had hit a dead end with my parasite research. Then I was approached by a foundation they said they had a sample of an unusual strain of parasite. Which foundation? Apparently, they had links to ARPA. But that is all I learned. I was somewhat ignorant of the ways of the world. Just being able to study it was enough for me. Yeah, I've heard that before. Go on. Half in doubt, I visited them to discover the body of an old man. Well... To be precise, his partial remains. A collection of parts, you could say. 
The man had died in an explosion. An old man, you say? His flesh had not decomposed. In fact, the tissue's cells were still metabolizing. The parasite had infected, or should I say assimilated with the tissues, and was keeping them alive. I became obsessed with studying the body parts, foregoing food and even sleep. Every day was filled with new discoveries. The parasite's biology, internal anatomy, life cycle. But there was only so much I could learn through observation. And so I made a decision. To truly know the parasites, I had to live with them. So you implanted them inside you from the dead man's flesh? Correct. <sighs> it was quite a gamble whether or not they would adapt to me. But fortunately, it appears I was compatible with them. Or perhaps, through my many years of research, my immune system learned to tolerate them. Were they that body's only parasite? Yes. However, there was a separate specimen that supplied its host with adrenaline in response to pain. And yet another that could control insects at will through secreting heterogeneous pheromones. Hornets! struck at zero. Since zero is using a private network, we get information, but we have no way to trace his location. That means the details are still fuzzy at this point, but apparently some new bioweapon was used. As soon as he noticed the dip in his vital signs, he had his stomach pumped and even underwent blood dialysis, but he didn't fully recover. Ironically, if zero kept more company, he'd have been safe. Since the incident, his speech and actions have been getting more unhinged by the day. He's probably been rushed to another safe house for intensive care. But the location is a complete mystery. That's the way he operates. He went to incredible lengths to make sure his great escape went unnoticed. So far, I know at least Langley and the Pentagon were involved. He had a blackout triggered in New York to disrupt the transportation and information grids and at least two submarines were sighted off the coast. The personnel involved were working off a cover story. Naturally, the White House was fed the same thing. The project is buried under a pile of dummy ops and backup plans stretching across multiple organizations. It's safe to say not one of the people involved knew what they were moving or to where. All top secret, no trail, no leads. He's living up to his name as usual. Only this time, even I can't find him. Now, the only record of his location lies within the Cypher AI that was at the heart of the escape plan. And that's closed off, with its data sealed away in a secret location. Skullface was able to put together this assassination attempt, but even he can't possibly know where Zero is now. I'll keep searching, but when you're up against he who controls information, it's gonna be a long battle. Major, I wondered whether you'd really call. Exer, I presume this was your doing. Do you like my gift? I've been searching a long time for this. It is what you were looking for, yes. 
The winged dagger of a comrade lost to the sands of Egypt. He served under the boss back in Rayforce. I delivered this pin to her after his death. We were both so very young. From that moment on, she never let it leave her side. She was still carrying it in Selino Yarsk. How about the back? Hmm. Ah. Something wrong, Major? Nothing, just pricked my finger. The back. The scar is there, just as I remember it. And this white stitching on the back. From the white berets the SAS wore in the early days. Ah. Major? 30th of December, 1941. It's the inscription I made the day he died. Of course. His body was never recovered. This pin badge is the closest thing he has to a gravestone. When I gave it to her, she just kept on running her finger over the inscription. Never again, she uttered, as if reprimanding herself for his death. She pressed hard, embedding the inscription itself into her finger. You see, it's why this spot on the back looks shinier than the rest. He was... our brother in arms. So... Yes, it's real. Thank you. There's no doubt about it. Good. Now I have no regrets. What do I owe you? Nothing. Just want to talk for a moment. Very well, then. It's about our man, Major. He's been making some moves. Miller? Yes, I know. Rhodesia, is it? Yes, and up to his old tricks again. No matter. He'll stumble soon enough. Hmm. Although he is under my jurisdiction now. And that's what you want to talk about? Not exactly. You see, my being here has made me realize I can still be of use to you. How so? This country is rich with biological resources. Bacteria, nematodes, viruses. I'm sure we can find something here to bring that plan back into action. Forget it. The Cleanser Project was just another one of my predecessor's daydreams. And the vocal cord parasites? Were an excellent test case for reverse evolution. Nothing more. What matters now is the genetics technology behind that work. With genetics, the clumsiness in targeting an entire race isn't an issue. We can target specific individuals. No need to breed multiple generations of parasite just to get results. But I... Don't be quaint, Exo. Once the Cold War is over, our enemies won't be so clearly defined. Using humans alone won't be enough. An electronic network will span the globe, and our enemies will blend right into it. You may be right, but will people really settle for an enemy they can't see? Men want to feel righteous, need to see the evil in the enemy they fear. Without it, they'll turn their aggressions inward, find an enemy inside. You know this is true. I see what you're saying. Just as those robbed of their parasites develop allergies and autoimmune diseases, a man robbed of his enemy develops self-destructive tendencies. And I know all the symptoms. Ethnic conflict, religious strife, terrorism. And with asymmetrical conflict, deterrence is a joke. That's why we must depend on information control. People need an appropriate context for their lives. A context that's stimulating without being destructive. That balance is the basis of equilibrium. You mean to say people will blindly accept your context without developing any allergies? If we're to unite the world, literacy must be suppressed. To suppress the information immune system, to borrow your metaphor. Immunity to information. But to ensure there's no allergic reaction, while the immune system fights off parasites and pathogens. It's done, Exo. This world will become one. I have found the way. 
The world that the boss envisioned will finally become a reality. Race, tribal affiliations, national borders, even our faces will be irrelevant. The nature of communication itself will change, and it will make mankind whole again. Some things can't be undone. My face was taken from me. There's no taking that back. A face means nothing when one soul is able to communicate directly with another. I have no intention of hiding behind your technological veil, Major. I wear my broken visage, this skull in the open, so that I may never forget what I've lost. You. What are you- The chain of retaliation is what will truly bind this world together as one. Ah. Major. You son of a... The pin. You... Yes, the pin. It's too late. They can't extract it. You see, Major, some things can't be undone. How did you find me? The girl. You made her talk. I'm sorry I couldn't visit or thank you in person, but it has been lovely chatting. And now that I know you're no longer interested in the garden, it's time for you to step aside. Yeah. You're a busy man, lots to do. So I've left you a little time. Go to hell! How dare you? You planned this all along. Had your own agenda. All these years. Yeah. Now, you see, the world can never truly become one. But the boss... I've been... You've been wrong. You're no different. Just like him. None of you understand the world she saw. I would say the same to you, Major. Ah. You steal it all away. Everything. The boss said the same thing. Only I understood what she meant. Major, I'll handle the rest. Oh, and one more thing. That pin badge, it was a fake. <sighs> I held on to the real one. I'll take good care of it. And continue the boss's work. Jack. Not yet. 
It's not over yet. The last nuke's been decommissioned. It's over, boss. I thought this day would never come. But while we can rejoice, we must never relax. The last nuke was deactivated. That is a fact. But the knowledge that built it is still out there. How long the world remains nuke-free is up to us. Will this moment persist? Or will human ambition cast us into the flames once more? Our duty is to pass on what we've learned to the next generation. The memories, the experiences, the sins. Only when our children show the wisdom not to forge new spears. Only then will we be truly triumphant. Humanity, every one of us, has chosen the path of nuclear disarmament. Out of ethics or desire, government policy, military strategy, whatever the reason, it's our path too. And each step forward makes it more solid. Patients have stabilized, but there's no telling how many will make it. The warhead we seized ruptured during transport. Recovering the leaked material exposed each of them to several hundred rats. Environmental contamination was kept to a minimum, thanks to their efforts. Heroes, every one of them. finished dismantling the warhead. The nuclear material has been vitrified and sealed away. It'll take at least 30 years of cold storage before it's safe. And even then, we can't just dump it in the sea, bury it in the desert. Nuclear disarmament. Boss, we can't let this achievement go to waste. And that means we'll have to get stronger. No nuclear program will go unseen. If someone manages to build another nuke, we'll be there to shut him down. Gotta love the irony.
after all. That's right, the man who went by SIGINT during Operation Snake Eater. Following Zero's disappearance, he's taken over command of Cypher. Well, to be precise, the AI he oversees has. The idea to have an AI act for Zero came about in 74, when the data from the mammal pod penetrated NORAD. Clearly, an AI couldn't be allowed to make its own decisions. So they would take away its ability to act, and instead, create a specialized system in which the AI, bound by specific rules, filters the massive amounts of data it collects before passing it on to people, subtly guiding their decision-making. A system of the people, by the people, for the people. So they began researching how to do it. DARPA apparently brought Strangelove on board to head it up. She was forced out after a certain incident. The direction of the project and any trace of her existence was scrubbed after her departure. Before Zero lost consciousness as his condition worsened, he left instructions for Anderson. Through a cutout, of course. Zero went out of his way to hide your location in order to keep you safe. This meant sacrificing his own protection. It was the only way to ensure you could stand alone as your own man. And here I am. The only link between you and the world that's passing you by. I'm your last connection now. This was Zero's last request. His will. Once you're awake, we need to discuss the best way to ensure your safety. Oh, and they've got a name for Anderson's AI project. It's called... The Patriots. It's all about ensuring that the concepts driving society appears the same in the mind of each person in that society about maintaining the identity of the individual, and yet having that individual willingly make up part of the whole. I guess it's fitting to call that patriotism. Creating a united world. Zero's will is already fading into a shadow of what it once was. Systems, guidelines, rules, laws. When you take a mentality and fix it in a solid shape, put it out there in the hands of people, it can only begin to decay. No mentality can last forever. When the body dies, the will dies with it. Oh, my God. 
Welcome back, boss. Let this happen. I guess it's time to increase security. Just give me the order. Who did this? A competitor. But we don't know who. Can't pin down a route to their base. But we're ready to strike back. Just give us that chance, boss.